Hello everyone, my name is Ronak and you're watching VectorWart. In today's video, we will take a look at scaling and rotating UI elements with WPF Storyboards. So here on the screen, I have a UI and a button and a simple shape, which on click of the animate scales and rotates the element using scale, transform and rotate transform elements. So uh, in this video, we will explore these uh, functionalities with using WPF Storyboards. We already explored fading elements and making them move. Today, we are going to add more visual flair to our WPF applications by learning how to scale or resize and rotate UI elements using WPF storyboards. These transformations are fundamental for creating engaging and dynamic user interfaces. We will dive into scale transform and rotate transform and understand the crucial role of render transform origin in controlling how these animations behave. So the power of scale transform and rotate transform. So uh, just like translate transform, which we looked at in our previous videos, which allowed us to move elements, uh, scale transform and rotate transform are types of transform that let us change an element size and orientation without affecting its layout space. So if you see our example over here, uh, it is in the same position, but it will scale in size and rotate uh, at the same position. So the scale transform, this transform lets you stretch or shrink an element along its X horizontal and Y vertical axis. You can animate its scale X and Y uh, scale Y properties. The rotate transform, this uh, transform allows you to rotate an uh, element around a specific point. In this case, it is the center point where it is rotating its axis and uh, you animate the angle property here to rotate the uh, object the importance of render transform origin is that when you scale or rotate an element wpf needs to know which point the transformation should occur that's where random ren, uh, render transform origin comes in it defines the point relative to the element itself that acts as a pivot uh, for these transformations so 0 comma 0 in this case uh, would be the top left corner uh, 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 would be the center most common for scaling and transforming and 1 comma 1 would be the bottom right corner. So by default, the render transform origin is uh, set to 0 comma 0. If you rotate an element with a default 0 comma 0 origin, it will spin around its top left corner, uh, which often looks awkward. Setting it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 would be make the scale and rotate from its center give you much more natural effect. We will try this out uh, when we start coding this uh, in Visual Studio. So let's start uh, building our uh, application. And uh, to do that, let's launch uh, Visual Studio. So here uh, I have uh, launched Visual Studio 2022. Uh, please uh, go ahead and click on create a new project. Select WPF app with .NET Framework. If you do not uh, see it in your recent templates, please uh, look for uh, WPF here. And uh, select desktop, uh, Windows, and uh, C Sharp as your language. And then you will find the template here uh, in the uh, set of templates. So let's uh, select WPF app with .NET Framework and click on Next. Give this project a name. I will rename this as uh, Scale Rotate Transform. And let me go ahead and click on Create. Our project has loaded. Let me change the orientation over here. And uh, let me go ahead and paste in some code so that we speed up this process. So the first thing first, uh, I will add the title, uh, height and width. As you can see, I have the code ready because I demonstrated it uh, at the beginning. So let me go back and I will uh, explain you step by step on what changes have been done. So here I am going to change the title, uh, height and width of our window. Uh, next, uh, I will go ahead and add row definitions. So within my grid, I'm going to add the row definitions. So here I have added two rows, one of height auto and one of height star. And then uh, next I am going to add a rectangle that has to be animated. So here, uh, let me copy in the rectangle and paste it. 
So here is our rectangle that is going to be animated. My The name of my rectangle is my animated rectangle. It is of width 100, height 100, and I have filled it with this purple color. Alignment is center and vertical alignment is also center. Here I have added this rectangle dot render transform origin, which was crucial. Uh, and here I have set it to 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5. So it will uh, rotate around this center axis. Then we have the rectangle render transform. This is a group transform for multiple uh, animations. So here uh, within this render transform, I have added this transform group, which will group these animations. One is the scale transform and the rotate transform. The scale transform, I have uh, named it my scale transform and the rotate transform is named to my rotate transform. And these are the two crucial properties, scale X and uh, scale Y, which we talked about. And uh, this will help us uh, to transform or, or stretch or string an element along its x and y axis for the rotate transform it is using this angle to rotate uh, the object so next uh, we will go ahead and uh, then we will create this button that will trigger our animation so let me uh, paste in that code uh, so after our rectangle we will add our button so this button is added in the grid of row of one and the button is added in the, so the rectangle is in the uh, upper part and here uh, you can see the content is animate this is what the text looks like and the width and height and margin are set it has an event handler called animate button underscore click for which uh, we will add the code behind which will trigger this storyboard then we have the horizontal alignment and vertical alignment to center and bottom then we have the uh, button background where we have added a linear gradient brush uh, which starts from 0, 0 to 1, 1 and this is the gradient stop. These are the two colors which uh, will provide us this linear uh, gradient effect. Next, uh, we will add grid resources and within our resources lies the storyboard that will help us uh, trigger these animations. So I will copy in that code and paste it over here so we have our grid resource and within our grid resource we have defined our storyboard we are calling our storyboard scale rotate storyboard it has two animations double animations uh sorry three animations one uh, two double animations for the scale animation and one double animation for the rotate animation so the double animation targets uh the storyboard um the sorry the storyboard targets the my scale transform which is our scale transform over here and uh, the target property is x-axis and the second double animation targets the y-axis and uh, it transforms it from 1 to 1.5 for a duration of one second and auto reverse is set to true then you have the second one uh, second uh, double animation which starts from 1 to 1.5 and the duration is also second one um, second and the auto reverse is also true and the repeat behavior is once uh, then you have the rotate animation where we have applied this double animation on the target name my rotate transform which is this uh, over here and then uh, the target property is the angle property and we want uh, the angle property to change from 0 to 360 and the duration is two seconds and the repeat behavior is forever and that is why you saw that the uh, um, uh, scale animations are uh, repeated only once but uh, when you saw the rotate animation it was indefinitely uh, rotating after we had clicked the animate button right now uh, there is no um, uh, code behind which will trigger this storyboard so let's go ahead and uh, quickly uh, add the code behind before i go there uh, let me uh, name this grid uh, i will call this uh, grid uh, my grid and uh, let me go here and give this grid a name main grid and uh, this will help me uh, to find the storyboard in our code behind so i will go to my code behind now and uh, there is uh, a simple thing that has to be done before that uh, let's uh, uh, go to this initialize component uh, and uh, see how we can trigger this so this is initialize uh, component is the standard wpf initialization then we will add our uh, button uh, that is the animate button click which we had created uh, on our button so let me go ahead and paste in that code and here you can see this is where our storyboard will be triggered so the storyboard uh, the this object is of type storyboard and to find that storyboard i will uh, use a different method instead of finding the resource so let me uh, since i have renamed my uh, grid i will make use of that instead of uh, finding this resource like this so let me go ahead and paste it here main grid is the name of the grid that we created and within that grid we know that we have a resource called 
scale rotate storyboard and we'll paste it here and remove this uh, code and here you can see scale rotate storyboard is what the storyboard is named after so let's uh, save this and uh, the next step is to begin the storyboard so uh, the scale uh, rotate storyboard dot begin this command will uh, start uh, the storyboard or kick off uh, both the scaling and rotating animations which are described within our storyboard the double animations so um, let's start uh, and uh, run this uh, wpf application by clicking on the start button and uh, Let's go ahead and click on the animate button and uh, you will observe that the purple uh, rectangle will grow large and then shrink back to its original size while continuously spinning in a mesmerizing loop. So let's go ahead and click on this animate button. And there you go, uh, uh, it's skewed, ro rotated and keeps rotating because the rotate animation is set to, uh, uh, if you see over here, uh, it is set to forever. So that's why uh, the animation keeps uh, rotating. So that is how uh, simple it was to scale and rotate uh, an object using WPF storyboards. Uh, some of the uh, use cases uh, are highlighting interactive elements, make buttons or icons suddenly grow on, on hover, uh, creating loading indicators. A spinning object is a classical way to show an activity uh, that it is loading. Um, Adding visual interest to context uh, like uh, rotating images in a gallery or scaling uh, elements into a view. Uh, in game development, animating characters or objects. So you can experiment with different from and to values, durations and repeat behaviors by setting the um, properties over here. For example, uh, we also talked about, let's let me stop this application. And uh, at the beginning of the uh, video, I told you about this render transform uh, values. So let's uh, play around with this a little. And I will show you how uh, this affects the uh, position of the object. So let me change it to 0, 0. And let's try it out and see how this plays out. So now when I run this, you will see that it uh, rotates and skews from this uh, top right, uh, top left corner. And now let me stop this application and change this to say 1, 1. And there you will see that it rotates from the bottom right corner. And uh, 0 0.5 uh, is the um, ideal point uh, where it will rotate around the center axis. So that is uh, that was for the render transform origin. The other things that you can play around uh, are the uh, from and to uh, attributes. So, um, so experiment with these uh, different from and to values, duration and repeat behavior uh, settings. Also try changing the render transform like I did and see how it affects the pivot point of your animations. In our next tutorial, we will dive into practical applications like creating engaging button click animations that will provide immediate user feedback. So stay tuned uh, for uh, my next video. And for those who haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. It means a lot. It motivates me to create more such videos. So till then, bye-bye.